First, we want to stand with all the victims worldwide of the COVID-19. It's horrible as you can watch from the news. And all of us are affected indirectly and directly. Socially, distancing, you know, economies, prices. But at this moment also we want to talk to the church for what has become of us as a result of this uh, virus. And of this pandemic, global, nothing like it. It is unprecedented. I'll share from scripture, but first I want you to have a feel of what I feel. It feels like a rapture right now. It is like a rehearsal. Yesterday we were in Entebbe and in Kampala and we have never seen traffic confusion. Now it's not a jam. Traffic confusion like it was yesterday. It's a mighty revolution. That will change the world forever. I want to salute the Sifting Church. We met with Church of Uganda by the time we were I mean, entering here. Even in lands that are angst, meaning uh, feeling a deep anxiety or dread, that people who are typically un on an unfocused mode about the human condition or the state of the world right now, we want to know that this has sent us to a direction that we must rethink certain things. We thank uh, truth, I mean, uh, Radio Unity for allowing us this and also for the leadership of Truth Evangelistic Fountain for sponsoring this moment. All of you Christians out there, we greet you in Jesus' name. And I don't want us to miss the moment and be not naive about what is going on right now. Because of that, I have chosen our text to come from John chapter 4, 19 to 24. That loving message of our Lord Jesus Christ will give us some encouragement and some hope in this despair. And I want to read right straight. Jesus, the Bible says, the woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain. And ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men how to worship. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me. The hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship ye, uh, ye know not what. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. From that reading, the contest between Christ and the Samaritan woman, there is an Eastern Orthodox and Eastern Catholic tradition that has given a name to this woman. That she was supposed to be called Fortine or Fortin or Fortini. That was the name given to this woman, Monu Fourteen. Monu this was a luminous name, uh, uh, and uh, you know it was a way of venerating her as a saint. Obedo obedo dano and uh, it expresses the sentiments. The, what happened between the woman and Jesus expresses even now the sentiments that and the concerns we have held for a long time. 
Mantia nyu tu laru lo kame oberu beri kwa wapi kara laj aine na melo tia nyu te yakina yesu kera shekere daho ina hasha wani yakina wa. In the church, for what is really important, when we talk about church, what are we talking about? We have heard the woman make a claim to traditions and histories and things like that. So we have come on this studio this morning to ask ourselves, what is religion? What is church? And we want to look at some perspectives, what, uh, three or four. Which Jesus and the woman seems to have been discussing. Which applies very strongly to the times we are living in right now. Now that we cannot have a church in our halls, in our auditoriums, in the cathedral. Number one is what I'm calling the ideological or perspectives. The first one goes to say it is not really the acts of worship in temples in our churches. But the text we have read delineates into two things. Number one, it, it talks about direct worship, prostrating. Like in Revelation chapter 4 verse 10 when the 24 elders prostrated themselves before the Lord all these other times in heaven. It describes the physical act of worship that right now most of us we are missing from our churches where we used to go. And there is a Greek word which is uh, which is called proskuneo. That is that direct worship when you bound, you bend your knees and you begin to adore and you begin to call on God. Which is defined by the location where you are going. That's what we are missing right now. So the woman was referring to proskuneo. And then the second dimension Mention is what is called latria, the old Greek or Latin, Latin which is an indirect way of worshipping uh, or revering the Trinity. And this is what we would want to connect to the spiritual service, which is rendered to fellow humans, me and you, uh, you know, you and the other. And I want you to know that the, the New Testament never confined worship to temples or churches or religious buildings. But it emphasizes and encourages on, uh, on the edification of other people or of the brethren. We see that in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, 26. It talks about the edification. We see it in Hebrews 10, 24, 26. 24, 25. That says we should not forsake the habit of meeting together, always in assemblies. But it also drives towards edification, to lift up the other people, not necessarily to be in a physical location. And you know you can even call somebody on a phone and still edify them, speak positive words, encouragement and stuff like that. I want us to know that we can be and we are still the church, even without being within the four walls of those churches. So this first dimension of proskuneo, direct worship, and latria, which is rendering services to the Trinity from the spiritual position, that drives us towards edification, lifting up humanity, it's so important that it should translate into daily practices to humanity. 
Ubedugina pielo teka memiero nini nini ubedugina mea tiye ikwada. How do I treat my brother? Atero mina ningo. Wife, husband. Chwara kiri shiega. Children, parents. Otino na kiri wa papa. Friends, church members. Uwara na kiri jua wanaleo kiri. Or the other church where I don't pray from. Nyoka nandu palege cha. How do I treat workmates and strangers? Atero jua wanatu yuke gini ngo. That's what Jesus was talking about. Magina me yesu note kobo. Which leads us now to the second point. Mando te tero wai point na mareo. Which was a real concern and this was the school of thought. That this woman... The, that was the only perspective she had. So before we miss it, the first point is very important. That our worship is about attitude, it's about spirit, it's about how I translate my honor to God to the way I treat my brother and sister. Okay, ni warwa. Do I love them? Do I forgive them? Do I serve them? Do I go along with them? Do I not despise, so bring them down, insult, you know, scorn, jeer, and all of those things? As people whom God has created. So the second dimension was locationalism or ritualism. Or nature, for example. In order to be able Kita menuti ye kerikom. You know, this lady said our ancestors used to worship on this mountain. She was referring to Mount Gerizim. Eh, enu nuti ko ni jodo warilego nyowaro ba in Mount Gerizim. That's the most pronounced mountain in Samaria if you travel there. Mono kai ni wari Samaria and God tamedo jongea. So she was so proud of that mountain. Da nuti a wahara take pi we got gi. And Jerusalem, as as far as the Jews were concerned. Eh, Judah ya nuti a wahara kere Jerusalem gi. You know, in this life, inye ekoani. Physical matters a lot to us. You know the things we see. But yet locations should only be for the purpose of identity. But what we do inside there and what comes out of there is what is core, is what is very important. We are in an age where the, the pride of location and uh, identity has heightened, has escalated beyond proportion. The pride is too much. And God in Jesus to the Samaritan woman was saying that was not the most important thing. And this is where idolatry seems to stem from. When we worship our houses or our churches or our buildings to the extent we have forgotten the purpose for which we are in those churches. This is why in Amos chapter 5 verse 21 God said he did not like you know, religious assemblies. In his own words, he said he hates it. He hates it. In other words, God wants us, like we have been conditioned right now uh, by the global pandemic, to see beyond the church. And by the time we will be allowed to return to church, by the way, we will have rethought to the church and, and understood afresh what the church is there for. Jesus in Matthew 21 13 he decried the church, the temple in Jerusalem at the time that it was a, a den of robbers. I want you people to reflect at the church we have today. And I've said this many times even before this virus came to hit the earth. The church has become a place where we're stabbing one another. False finding. Character assassination. Gossip. It has become a club where we, we build the philosophy to attack Attack the others. Attack the other church. Attack the other sister. And do all the stuff that Jesus did not even call us to do. I think this is why Jesus said, You Samaritans, you worship what you don't know. In other words, even in some physical locations of church today, whether where I come from, or where you come from, 
there is a misconstrued idea about what the church is. People have used the church to be assassination rooms, slaughterhouses. During this recess, during this period of rest from the church, may we rethink, may we even fast and pray to get, get a new perspective of what God actually intended for the church to be. When I say this, it doesn't mean that I'm discarding the church. Never, never, never. The church as a place of worship is vital in ways that cannot be counted even in millions. That's where we do weddings. We b- go for requiem masses. We do birthday parties. We do concerts and elections. That's where we settle our internally displaced peoples. The church is what built us your hospitals like Mengo, Zambia, and all these others. Like, like LPC. You know, the church does so many things. There are still orphanages like the one we are leading in Lira. But what God is reminding us that. that when we are in those churches, we must be sincere to our confessions. We must latria in the proscuneo, if you want. Yes, in that proscuneo, in that physical location, in that prostrating, in that every mode of worship that you, any one of you is, is connected with, you should do it but with the spirit of serving humanity, of honoring God in truth and in spirit. This is going to be very important. The church will now we have, will have a reason for the church to be here. Again, I want you to know that this is just a reminder that Jesus was bringing to this Samaritan woman. Needless to say, like I said before, Jesus told the Samaritan woman that you Samaritans, you worship what you don't know. Could it be true, Ambrose? Um, Ambrose and, and my brothers who are here and you were out there some of our churches have become places of falsehood they are cults they worshiping what they don't know I'm not pointing fingers right now but I'm using the word of God Jesus said that you worship what you don't know and by the way we see some Christians they, they say I pray from such and such a place with a big name but their lives do not portray that they pray from there that brother or sister would be praying would be praying to a God they don't know so this day this Sunday here may I challenge you in love that even though we are seized from the church for a little moment it's a time of reflection it's a time of rethinking the church in a very loving way, not in condemnation. I think I want to go to what I'm calling the last point before I summarize. Which is, I'm, I'm sure you're going to like this one. As Jesus dialogued with the woman, with the 14, now as the Catholics have called her, because she's a saint already, you know all that this was the lady who brought the gospel to Samaria. And I like to quote this scripture to edify and to lift up women. Women are not useless. They're not mere people. Women are very important, not only being our mothers, but they were the first preachers of the gospel from the resurrection. The first preacher of the gospel to Samaria was a woman. Oh, man, me chuchu chun mon ni un mon piru tag. Jo longa mo tu su jiri meg na hamet ni chera yesu na hadaha ni du su bero mon. So at this juncture, I Don't want to talk can. about number point number three, which is people. God's people you and I in the midst of this virus in the midst of the cessation and the lockdowns I was teasing with my wife this morning I said uh, will pilots remember how to fly planes after one month me I, will, I have a flight in May but I'm going to push it in July so that uh, pilots will have practiced again how to fly planes because I'm not 
going to fly planes for three months, or, you know, and, and all of those times. But listen, people are very important to God. No one should think that God is now mad at us. Yes, the plague is here. The punishment is here. We know that in Genesis 6, 6, God regretted for having created us. But, it, but even he reserved eight people who did not die. And I know within this time, you and I, God is counting on you. He loves us. He's seeking for his people. Jesus sought this woman. He said God is seeking for true worshippers. If you made up your mind to worship in truth and in spirit, God is seeking you today. God is seeking us today. God is not going to see that all of us we are going to die. No, he's seeking us. You know, in the Bible, in 1 Corinthians 3.16, we are his temple. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. God dwells in us. You know, this is very important. That's why when I see a member from another church, I love them because God is their father. If I was the only one spiritual or important, he could have killed them and I would have remained alone. This is why governments even lances false people because you know government is like a father a father to everybody no. you know. so as we are concluding right now you know i've said my alarm but ambrose you're free to tell me okay we're stopping here okay. this is very important Man, you know there's a clandestine you know clandestine is this there's a kept secret there is a, a done secretively because it is a licit mode of denominationalism right now. Yeah. This, this is what I call churchanity, not Christianity. This is churchanity. This has delayed the gospel from the global impact Ma and the far it should go. For example, people want to go only where their denomination is. They want to welcome only persons from their denominations. But everybody belongs to God as long as they are from scripture and they are truthful. Like when I go abroad, I'm not going to go to Truth Evangelistic Fountain because not there. I have to connect to the global church of Jesus Christ. I have to be a servant of God, a child of God. You have to be a child of God who is led in truth, in spirit. You can thrive anywhere, whether or not within your church. Like now, you can still be a Christian. This is very important. And as we finish now, I want you to know you are the church out there. Let us worship. Let us revere. Let us honor God by acts, by expressing it in righteousness, in love, in forgiveness, in human service. Let the spirit brethren services being truthful. That is the identification that we will be known with. Is that going to be from our church? So you have the opportunity today. Like Jesus said, God is seeking for those who worship him in truth. God is not seeking for those who worship him in church A, B, C, D. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Ambrose. Can we pray? Yes. From the Lego. God Almighty, we give you praise. Particularly, I want to bless Radio Unity. I want to bless my brother Ambrose and the management. But I also want to bless your people out there. And as we are within your people, let us use this time, Father, to see what you are telling us, to focus our service to humanity, to love one another, 
to not worry but to know that we should be of good cheer you have overcome the world you have overcome the coronavirus we thank you and bless the next people coming here in Jesus name amen, amen.